Hello everyone. Amidst the brouhaha that surrounds the One Wheel GT launch is a particular topic that I will try to illuminate a little bit for you and that is the topic of lithium ion batteries and their safety and their dangers and all that sort of stuff. Now lithium ion batteries are by their nature complicated and complex and the systems that integrate and control them are also necessarily complicated and complex. However, I realize that no one video can ever fully inform an end user or a consumer as to all the ins and outs and the nitty gritty of how they work, why they work, how they fail and why they fail. But it is important to know that it's not necessarily good or true to just point at something and say, that is entirely dangerous or this is entirely dangerous. Now to just put the idea of battery fires and battery danger right in the front and the beginning of this video, are lithium ion batteries dangerous? Yes and no. They can be very dangerous if they are poorly designed, poorly constructed, negligently handled, used or implemented. There are ways that lithium ion batteries can fail and when they do fail, they can fail very catastrophically. Now, on the question of can a one-wheel battery blow up your house, probably not. Can a one-wheel battery, if it failed catastrophically, burn your house down? Yes. However, that's also the case of any lithium-ion battery in any light or portable or even large electric vehicle. It's actually specifically why I go out of my way and spend time and quite a lot of money testing battery failures. Most of it I don't bother filming, but I do take extensive notes, so that way when I am embarking on a custom DIY project, I have both in my notes and in the back of my brain some sort of realistic basis of how this particular cell, when assembled and integrated in this way, could fail and what that failure mode looks like. That being said, I actually have a relatively recent video where I intentionally blow up a uh, medium-sized lithium-ion battery for the sake of testing a safety device. And that video is not just a review or a test of that safety device. Within that longer video, I explain how I made that battery blow up, I explain the testing methodology, and I also explain some of the common ways that a lithium-ion battery in something like a board-shaped PEV can fail and fail catastrophically. So if you're interested in actually seeing what lithium-ion battery failures can look like at their worst, that is a decent video. I will link to it in the description below. I think it's good information for the general public to have because lithium ion battery failures can take many different forms and have failures through different causes. And, and it is my experience that lithium ion battery failures specifically within one wheels are extremely rare. Probably some of the rarest, whether that is an aftermarket battery or a stock battery. And now that that is said, I do want to talk about the idea of repairing one wheels and dealing with one wheel batteries because something that I have noticed is that when it comes to the topic of independent repair and repairing of one wheels, the word repair tends to get replaced with the word modify. And that's something that really should be clarified and separated that repairing is not the same as modifying. Now, personally, if you buy a PEV, I don't personally care what you do with it. It's yours. If you want to modify it and change it to work however you want it to work, that is your business. It is not mine. And that's that. However, my own personal shop doesn't do one wheel modifications of that nature. I only ever repair a battery and replace it with the same configuration. And so that is the topic that I want to focus on as far as the example that I have to show you. And that example does have to do with a current generation one wheel product and that's the one wheel pints which is over there on the bench and it's regarding this. This is a stock one wheel pint battery and so let's just take a look at that example over there. This is an original one wheel pint and it is obviously dismantled and the customer brought this in because it simply does not turn on. It was purchased and it was left in storage for a while and it does not turn on. It is unresponsive, and so 
I've opened it up to first check if it's just the battery that has died because the BMS has a parasitic drain to keep the functions going. There's data logging, there is communication, there is an electronic switch. And so all that requires power. And so if you leave this thing for long enough, it will drain the battery even beyond the low voltage cutoff point. And so that is what I think happened. And in order to check that, you really can just plug in a working battery. And so this is the stock battery and we can just disconnect it very carefully. So we unplug the balance connector and then we unplug the main terminal. And this stock battery will be put aside. And this is a test pack. This is not to be installed in here. This is just a working battery to make sure that the BMS is not damaged. By the way, the BMS is right here and you can just unplug these three connectors and remove it. We don't need to do that right now because I don't know if this thing is broken or not. And so we will take our test battery and plug in the XT60, which is wired backwards because of course, and then we plug in the balance connector. And now we test if this thing turns on. And it does. So the BMS is fine. Everything else is fine. It is showing a full battery. And we will also check the app. This board has one mile on it and it works perfectly fine. No error codes. And there you go. And so what this demonstrates is that when it comes to simply repairing something like a one wheel pint, which is by the way, a current generation product, it does not require such high complexity rocket science in order to just put in a new battery pack or to swap a BMS should that be broken. Now the actual repair that I'm doing is I'm taking this dead stock pack, which I measured and this entire battery is reading one volt. And so this thing is flat, totally flat dead, should not be recharged or reused. And the actual fix is to open this up, use the original frame and the original wiring, replace the cells in it with an equivalent cell, which is not that hard to find. And so this will then be reinstalled in here. It will be closed back up properly. And this thing will be functioning as good as it was when it was new. Now, this is something you can do on the Pint. This is a repair that you can do on the Pint X. This is not a repair that you can do on the One Wheel GT. If I wanted to check just to make sure that the battery was functioning or not, as you just saw me do, the One Wheel GT would brick itself. It would have an error that I could not clear. And so the entire thing would have to be sent back to the factory for that error to be cleared and for them to do whatever it is that they wanted to do. And so rather than this being a very inexpensive repair for a very small battery rebuild, this could end up being a whole lot of time, money and headache. And so this is just one example that I happen to have on the bench right now. And I think it's worth mentioning because this is simply a case of taking an equivalent or if they were available, an OEM battery, putting it in the box, sealing it back up, and then they would be good to go and on their way. And so when it comes to those kinds of repairs, the battery no longer functions, there's nothing wrong with any other part of the board, are those kinds of repairs inherently dangerous? It doesn't seem to be the case, no. The battery's inside a one wheel and I haven't opened up a one wheel GT because I don't want it to brick itself. Those batteries have two plugs. The main terminal, which is an XT60 wired backwards, and the balance connector, that whole thing with a bunch of wires on it. And those kinds of repairs are not particularly dangerous for a very simple reason. You do have to dismantle the board in order to get inside the box, but once you open the box up, the battery itself lifts out, you unplug it, you plug in a new one, you make sure it's seated properly so it doesn't pinch any wires, and then you carefully replace the gasket, the lid goes back on, and then you're on your way. Which is why doing such a simple repair as simply swapping out a totally flat battery for a working one is not a very dangerous or complicated operation. And that's because when you're rebuilding a battery or replacing it with the equivalent battery, you're not actually collecting a random bunch of cells and hoping that it works properly. You are specking the cell for an equivalent knowing that it will work properly. And that points directly back to the difference between modifying and repairing. My main interest with PEVs outside of custom builds that I do is can this thing work again? It is broken, it no longer works, can it work again? And when it comes to the one wheel, that's a matter of is the battery dead? 
Yes. Can we put an equivalent functional battery of the same exact spec in its place in order for it to function again? And outside of the one wheel GT, that seems to be the case. Whether it's an XR or a Pint or a Pint X, you can take out the non-functioning battery, whether it's just been in storage or a cell group is entirely out of balance and it no longer functions all the way down to the bottom of the charge, whatever the case may be, you can remove the battery and replace it with either a rebuild or an equivalent configuration and spec, and it will just function because that's simply how batteries work. Lithium ion batteries work basically one way. And the BMSs, whether it's in a one wheel or in an e-bike or a scooter that manage them also kind of just work in the same way. They may have different parameters and expectations for configurations, voltage ranges, and current traveling through the BMS. However, the actual management of the cells themselves fall within a bandwidth, that's not the right word, fall within a range of use and operation that is expected because cylindrical lithium ion cells behave similarly. The lithium ion cells inside a one wheel pint or a GT or an XR work the same as, this is an X-way wave and it's got a battery on the bottom that oddly enough, you can take off. It has a swappable battery. These have lithium ion cylindrical cells in them there's a BMS in these. They function very similarly. This is a custom DIY electric skateboard that I built for somebody. Uh, the remote receiver died, so it's back in the shop, but it's fixed now. And this has a 1.2 kilowatt hour battery in it. It is quite heavy. This thing goes 40 miles an hour and the BMS in it communicates with the motor controller for the sake of many different things. However, cylindrical lithium ion cells and they also function the same. And so when it comes to repairs and battery replacements and things like that, the idea of how do we know that the repair was done properly? How do we know that the repair will hold and last? Well, the first indicator that a repair person is qualified and skilled is if the repair actually works, if you've made the device function again. As far as longevity goes, if you're using the exact same parts in the exact same configurations as was there before, except now they're just working instead of being broken, the design is really what's going to ensure that the configuration itself is viable long-term. And when it comes to the technical part of doing battery work and battery replacements and battery repair, one of the ways you can tell if a battery is going to work is is to actually just check to see if it works. You do physical inspection of the actual construction of a battery. You use a meter to check to make sure that the voltages along the balance harness is proper. And you can inspect the quality of the welds, the solder joints, all of that stuff. These are things that are checkable by anyone with expertise in electronics repair and DC circuitry. In fact, for the end of this video, I actually wanna to go to the bench and open up a couple of one wheel batteries to show you the insides of them and also just to illustrate that these things really are just common lithium ion battery packs. The design is good and they're designed to be a robust, long lasting battery pack. However, they still are just lithium ion battery packs. They wear out, they are subject to the same QC issues that every battery pack manufacturer is subject to. And it's for that reason that they are indeed a wear part and they have to be able to be replaced. All right, so this is the battery of a one wheel XR. All I've actually done so far is taken the blue shrink off and I've cut some of the tape. And right away beyond the tape, you can already see battery cells. As we move the tape away, we come over here to the discharge leads or main terminal leads and you have the positive and negative. And so you can see here, negative terminal, it's a little piece of nickel just folded over, soldered onto this silicon wire and covered over with some, it's just some shrink wrap. And you have the paper separator, which is good because that's insulation, fine, no problem. I use that as well. And then down there is the positive terminal. Once again, folded piece of nickel, you can kind of see it in there with the solder covered over with some heat shrink. And that's the main terminals of this battery pack. Apart from that, you bring this back, remove the tape, and then you see the rest of it. And these are balance wires. These are connected, soldered to little nickel offshoots from each of the groups. And this is what samples the voltage of each individual group of cells. And that's what ends up being funneled out to this balance connector. And so that's what plugs into the BMS. 
And there you have it. This is a one wheel pint battery and it looks exactly the same as the previous generation one wheel XR battery. You've got plastic frame, cells are in it, separated, fine. And you have the main terminals, positive and negative, and those are soldered on to the end. You can actually, if you take a look, you've got the nickel right there that terminates this pack, soldered onto there. Positive runs down, and I believe terminates right there. 15 cells. You can see right through the fiber tape, you've got the balance wiring there, and those are soldered to little nickel bits that stick out from each cell, and those wind down into this balance connector. The construction philosophy of this lithium ion battery pack is the same as the one in the XR, is the same as the one on a plus, is the same, I imagine, as the one on the GT, and that is simply because lithium ion battery packs, electrically speaking, are designed with a similar philosophy. Now, obviously it is not a great idea for any person with zero expertise or know-how to go into any PV, dig out the battery and start messing around. But there are people who work outside of product manufacturers with the expertise and the know-how to be able to repair and service devices skillfully with good quality work. And the quality of the work is what really matters. Is the fix good? Is it viable long-term? And has the issue been resolved? And in the cases of replacing a one-wheel battery, it's a matter of lifting the pack out, unplugging two connectors, placing an equivalent pack in, whether it's an OEM pack or an equivalent, and then reconnecting it, seating everything properly, closing it back up, and reassembling the device. This is work that is being done by skilled technicians at independent repair shops, but on the topic of saying that independent repair of batteries is inherently dangerous does not seem to be true. As always, I appreciate your viewership. Thank you for your time. There actually are non-one wheel related videos coming, and I am very excited about them. They both encompass different kinds of fixes, repairs, projects, and of course, Eastgate Con, which I'm still working on. Thank you again for watching and take care of yourself.